Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I am taking part in a very special blog hop. It is actually day one of a week-long celebration for Neat and Tangled's fourth birthday. And as a part of their fourth birthday celebration, they're doing this week-long blog hop. They're giving away some fabulous prizes, so head on over to my blog to get more information. And they've also released some special new stamps and dies. Now this Celebrate Stamp and Die Set is a part of that new release and I wanted to show you how this stamp set and the die set coordinate together. Now it's cool because you can use the stamp or the die set on their own, but they coordinate really well. So on this first one, I've stamped that word Celebrate from the stamp set and I've cut it out using that shadow die. On the second one, I've just used that intricate inner word die to cut some colored cardstock. And on this third one, I've actually stamped the word celebrate and then lined up that intricate word die over the stamped image and cut that out. Now, it's not exactly perfect, but I was able to line this up pretty well. So I think that's really cool how all of these products work together. Now, something else you could do is what I'm showing you here, and you could actually stamp the image, cut it out using the outline, and then cut another color using the intricate inner word die, and then kind of offset that, and then you'd have a stamped shadow as well as the outline on that image as well. Is that like clear as mud or what? <laughs> Now, in addition to the Celebrate stamp set and die set, they've also released this daily tag die and the Lucky Stars die set. And I'm going to be using everything that you saw here except for the daily tag. Now, that daily tag would make a really cool, if you folded it in half, I thought that would make a really cool place card. But for today's card, I'm starting out with an A2 size card base. So I took a piece of linen cardstock. This is from The Essentials by Ellen Line. I've cut it to four and a quarter by 11, and then I scored it at five and a half to create a top folding A2 size card. And now I'm taking a little bit of micro pour tape and I just went ahead and neutralized it on the back of my hand. And I'm using that to hold this Lucky Stars die cluster in place on my card front. And then I'm going to run it through my Big Shot machine. Now you're going to see that I've cut out all these little star windows and eventually I'm going to make a background that covers the entire card front. But to begin with, I am using all of these dies kind of as a group. Now they're actually intended to where you can cut them apart and use them individually. And here I'm just showing you that if you bend those wires that hold the dies together kind of back and forth, you're able to separate them. Now it is much easier to use the like a die snips to cut those apart, but you can also separate them by bending them back and forth. So after I used these dies as one big group, I broke them down into smaller sections and then I ran it through my die cut machine. And then I broke them down into their individual little shapes and I used those to fill in the gaps on my card base here. So I'm left with a card base that has all of these stars cut out of the front of it. So now that I have my card base created, I'm going to be backing it with some airbrushed acetate here. So I have some window sheets. This is from The Essentials by Ellen Line. I've cut it down to be just a little bit smaller than my card base. And I'm going to be using this Copic airbrush system. This is the ABS 1N. And it comes with all the supplies that you see here. So I'm holding the grip there, which is like the gun, and then the adapter there on the bottom. And I'm just screwing those together. And then I'm going to take this little hose and screw it into the bottom of that adapter. And I'm going to take the other end of that hose and screw it onto my air can. Now this air can is compressed air. It is the 180 can from Copic. So it gives you about 30 to 45 minutes of spray time. And if you want to never run out of air, you can actually convert this system to work with an air compressor. I don't have an air compressor, but after my experience with this, I think I might be in the market for one. <laughs> So now that I have that all put together, I've slipped my Copic marker in there. You do want to make sure that you use the chisel nib on this, not your brush nib. And I've started the flow of it kind of off of my acetate there just to kind of get a feel for it. And then I'm going to slowly build up the color. So I've used BG11, BG23, and BG18, and I'm kind of creating 
an ombre effect here. So I'm going from light to dark and you can see I'm just kind of sweeping across that acetate. Now because Copic marker ink is alcohol based, it will dry on this acetate. You couldn't do this with a dye based marker because it would never dry on that slick surface. But the Copic ink, because it's alcohol based, will dry on these slick surface. And you can actually use this airbrush system to add color to embellishments as well. So here's my finished piece here. Um, because I was running out of air there on the bottom, I got a little blotchy, but you're never gonna see that when I mount it behind that card base anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. But like I said, that running out of air was just super inconvenient. I couldn't find the compressed air anywhere where I live because we don't have a whole lot of crafting stores. And so now I think I need a compressor so that I never run out of, out of air. <laughs> So I'm putting that on my wish list. So you see there, I've gone ahead and cut a frame. This is going to hide the adhesive that I'm placing on this acetate here. I'm using the 1 8 inch Be Creative tape to attach this acetate onto my card base. And before I place it in there, I'm actually just buffing off some of the fingerprints that I left on it with a paper towel. And there is going to be a shiny side of your acetate and kind of a more dull or muted side of your acetate. The more dull or muted side is actually the side that you airbrush on and the shinier side is the opposite side from that. So the back side of the airbrush side. And I made sure that I mounted that acetate with the shiny side out. So once I got my acetate in, adhered in there, I placed that frame also with some Be Creative tape and that's just hiding the adhesive that I used to hold that acetate inside of my card base. And I wanted to show you here, once I get this all put together, I just scribbled a note on some Nina Solar White and placed it inside because the really cool effect of this card is that you can actually see the writing on the inside when the card is closed. And if you don't like that, I'm going to show you a little fix for that later on in the video, so stay tuned. So now I'm taking my Celebrate stamp set and I'm going to do a little bit of embossing on some vellum. So I've prepped the surface with my EK Success powder tool. I've inked up the Celebrate stamp with some Versamark ink and the top stamp says, it's your birthday. I've inked that up in some Versafine Onyx black pigment ink, but I actually go back and emboss that in some white on vellum instead. But I'm going to go ahead and show you this step. I've added some clear embossing powder over that black sentiment there. And for my Celebrate word, I thought it would be cool to have a mixture of silver and gold. So I'm using the WOW Platinum Sparkle Embossing Powder. And you can see I've just added it to the top of that stamped word and kind of flicked it off down that to where it wouldn't get on the bottom. So I turned the word upside down so I wouldn't get any of that silver on the bottom part of the word. And then I've added the gold sparkle embossing powder from WOW onto the bottom of that. Now, once the embossing powder is on the top, the gold part won't stick to the top. So I was able to add the gold part just to the bottom. I didn't have to be as careful with that. And then I heat set it. And then I have this really cool gold and silver sentiment that has some sparkle in it for my card front. And then I'm using the outline die to just cut that out with my Big Shot machine. So now I wanted to add a little bit of dimension behind this vellum die cut embossed sentiment that I have for the front of my card. And so I thought it would be cool to use the actual intricate word die that comes with that die set to create a foam backer, I guess, for this. So I'm just taking a little Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm adding some stick it adhesive to the back of that Nina Solar White cardstock, and then I'm going to burnish it on here. And then I'll remove the other backer from that and place some fun foam behind this. So now I have some stick it adhesive sandwiched between some fun foam and some Nina Solar White cardstock. That Nina Solar White cardstock serves to keep that fun foam from kind of stretching out too much. And then I've taken that intricate word die and just run it through my big shot on that Nina Solar White fun foam combination there. And I'm left with this really intricate word die. Now I've put a little bit of Zig two-way glue pin behind the embossed sentiment that I created earlier. And because these line up perfectly, I'm able to sneak this little 
die cut word behind there and it adds dimension to that entire vellum piece and you won't be able to see it through the front. So kind of a cool way to use that intricate word die to create a little bit of dimension behind that embossed piece that I created. Now I've taken some DMC thread. This is both silver and light gold and I've created kind of a messy nest. I'm using a little tiny bling glue dot. This is from ThermoWeb to adhere that onto my card base. Once I get it adhered on there, then I'm going to kind of spread out those threads to kind of make it even more messy. And then you see, I've gone ahead and gone back and embossed my It's Your Birthday sentiment in white on some vellum. And I'm adding a little bit of that stick it adhesive behind that embossed greeting there. Now, the cool thing about stick it adhesive is it's super thin, so you can die cut it, but it's also, you cannot see it when you place it behind vellum. So that's why I used it here. I placed it behind that embossed sentiment on the vellum and then used it to adhere that um, pattern paper underneath. And then I placed a piece of foam adhesive on the pattern paper to adhere it to my card front. And now I'll add a little bit of multimedia matte finish to the back of my vellum piece there with the foam on the back of it. And I will place that over the embossed sentiment that's below that it's your birthday sentiment and over the thread that's there. And once I get it positioned where I want it, I'm going to just take a heavy acrylic block and place it on top so that I'll get a really good bond and then I'll set it aside to dry. Now just to add a little bit more sparkle to this card, I'm using some Pretty Pink Posh mini gold star confettis here on the front and I've just attached those with the multimedia mat. And then I went ahead and rounded the bottom right hand corner of my card with the We Are Memory Keepers 3 8 inch corner chomper. So you can leave the card here and it is beautiful as it is. In fact, I may prefer this version over the version that I'm getting ready to show you. But if you're not down with seeing your writing through the card, which I think is kind of cool, then I wanted to show you a little solution for that. So I've taken another piece of pattern paper. This is actually a stamped piece of pattern paper. And I have created a little bit of a flap on it. So this is what I'm going to end up here with. And you see this little flap here? It's only about a quarter inch wide, but I've just scored it and kind of folded it back. And then I'm going to use the Be Creative tape again to put on top of that flap. And then I'm going to use that flap to attach this on the inside of my card. So I'm just placing it right below the fold line there. I did have to cut this slightly smaller than the card so that it wouldn't stick out and it wouldn't interfere with the folding of my entire card base. But you can see there that allows you to have a little bit of pattern behind your acetate and also hide your written sentiment or written greeting on the inside. So it's just another fun thing that you can kind of do with this acetate window. This airbrushed acetate would also be awesome for shaker cards. In fact, keep stay like stay tuned because I think I just might do that pretty soon. Now, I have all of those little star pieces kind of broke apart now and I don't want to lose them so I like to use this magnetic storage sheet this is from the essentials by Ellen line to store all of these little tiny dies so that I don't lose them and I brought in all of the trash that was on my desk to show you what normally happens see these little tiny dies they end up underneath all of this trash that's on my desk because I'm not very careful as I'm creating but I wanted to show you a trick for finding that. I have one of the magnets from my Misty, and all I have to do is kind of hover it over the trash, and that's how I find my little tiny dies when I'm missing them on my desk. So I'm gonna show you that again. I have my magnet from my Misty, and I have my die hidden in all of that trash, and I just ran it over there, and it automatically jumped up to my magnet. Now, these magnets are strong enough that even if it's hidden beneath that backer paper, it pulls it right up too. So just a little fun tip there for when you lose your dies. I don't know. Do you lose your dies? I always lose my dies. It's also good for pulling it out of the trash can as well. I have been known to throw away my dies a time or two. <laughs> So that completes my card project for today, featuring some fun new products from Neat and Tangled and also celebrating their fourth birthday. 
For more information on this blog hop, be sure to visit my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. You'll find more still shots and more information on this card project. And your next stop along the way will be Kathy Rakusen. I'm sure she has something amazing for you, so don't forget to stop by there. And don't forget to leave a comment over at my blog to be entered for a chance to win one of the many fabulous prizes that Neat and Tangled is giving away this week. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.